The Selfish Path to Romance. Download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com. Lawrence, your wife discovered that you have a porn addiction? Yeah. Yeah, tell me what's going on. Uh, I've been married for 10 years. uh, You've been married how many years? 10. 10 years, okay. Yes. And um, my wife, about a week ago, found out that I have a porn addiction, and which um, I've actually had problems with before. Okay. Um, and she's known about it in the past, or this is a total shock to her? Yeah. Oh, she knew yeah. about it in the past? Yeah. Okay. And so I kind of so I pretty much hit it from her again the second time around. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. And when you say porn addiction, that can mean many things. That can mean that you're going to yeah. strip clubs. That can mean that you're... Internet. So it's internet. Yes. Is it internet only? Yeah. Are you connected with a particular woman that on the internet where it's a one-on-one relationship and you admire her very no. much? No. So it's no. M- no. It's random. Yes. Okay. Okay. So d- tell me what you would like the most help with. Um, I, I need help with um trying to understand what's the best way for me to get help be able to salvage my marriage. Okay, so if the goal is salvaging your marriage, the one of the mm-hmm. questions you want to ask yourself is what has gone wrong in the course of the marriage that led the intimacy out of the marriage you know what has mm-hmm. not what has not been working for either of you you know my guess is she has not been satisfied um either and it's not just sexual what the reason that it's so painful to her is because it's a rupture of the trust mm-hmm. and if you're looking to rebuild trust um that's where to begin and the best gift you can give her is to genuinely, honestly, without yes buts, without explanations, if she's willing, allow her to let you hear her pain and her words and how it's affecting her. Because she will feel visible. And you can't guarantee that the trust will be built. It's a first step, though, and it's a wonderful first loving step. Just to say... Honey, let me know how I've hurt you. Would she be willing to talk to you that way? Yeah, and she has. And she has. Uh, and just to some respect, yes. Okay, and then when she, when she, when you completely hear her, let her know that you've hurt her. So if I understand it, these are the ways that I've really hurt you. I've broken your trust again. You're considering leaving the marriage. Now, I'm making this up. I don't know if that's the case. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're furious with me. You don't think you could ever love me again or trust me. And that that you want out. Is that right? And she may say yes. And and that's okay. You know, she needs to allow that part of herself to say yes. Is there any strength in the marriage that you think that part of her wants to stay with you? Yes, I, I think so. Yeah, I believe so. Then that will be the second part that comes out. But that is never, when, when any of us feel burned or hurt by someone we love, we can't say, yes, but I love you too. What we, what we need them to do, what we need what the hurt party needs the other partner to hear the other party to hear hey i gotta interrupt this because we've got to pay some bills 30 seconds that's it a very quick ad and then alan will be back romance i wish i knew more about what girls want from a relationship boy i wish i knew more about what i want where's that ad i saw here it is the selfish path to romance a serious romance guidebook Download Chapter 1 for free at SelfishRomance.com and buy it at Amazon.com. Huh. The Selfish Path to Romance. That is interesting. What the hurt party needs the other partner to hear, the other party to hear, is that we're in a lot of pain. 
because of some choice or action that they made or something they said. And that's what we need to hear. And we need to know that they fully, fully understand us. Do you want to... Do, now, um, so partly it's how to rebuild the trust. And there are some books. Some people consider the porn an affair. So you can get the book after the affair. How to... I don't have the exact subtitle. Um how to rebuild trust when a, a partner has been unfaithful and that's by Dr. Spring that's on my website actually I'm reaching for the book right now healing the pain and rebuilding trust when a partner has been unfaithful there's another book getting past the affair and that book deals with how do you deal with the initial blow it it breaks it down into stages so that's also another good guide that's by uh, several authors one the first one is Schneider um, and I, uh, those two should help you. The bigger issue is yourself. Mm-hmm. What do, I, I, oh, actually, this is so funny. I just, I wrote a book, The Selfish Path to Romance, How to Love with Passion and Reason. Um, and that's with my co-author, Ed Locke. And we have a whole section, a whole part in our book that we've dedicated to making yourself lovable. What does it take so that you love yourself? Because you can't ask your wife to love you if you feel some Mm self-contempt. You know, you want to repair... Does that make sense? Yes. You you want to give yourself a lifetime gift for yourself, Lawrence, which is repairing that in yourself. And many people are attracted to the Internet. I mean, the Internet, what does it offer? It offers you sex with... It's anonymous, it's accessible, it's affordable. I mean, but it but it gives you a pseudo intimate relationship. It's not a real relationship. And 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 if you want the real thing, it starts with yourself. And that's why we titled our book The Selfish Path to Romance. Because you need to value yourself. Not to not, we don't mean we don't ever mean selfish in terms of run roughshod over other people. It's truly valuing yourself. So I you know, I hope that helps. It does, and that is a serious issue, which I've uh, heard you speak about cognitive uh, therapy before. Yes. Um, So I didn't know if that would be beneficial in my case, because I know that there's some things that I need to work on self-esteem. If this is a wake-up call for you, it is the best birthday gift. It is the best holiday gift. It's the best ever gift you could give yourself. So I would say absolutely, if you are open to therapy, uh, give yourself a hug. <laughs> and definitely oh. cognitive therapy is the best. Academy of CT.org you can go to. So thank you so much for your call, Lawrence. Thank you. I wish Very you th- I Okay, I wish you the best. And here's a little more from Dr. Kenner. We can't go around measuring our goodness by what we don't do, by what we deny ourselves, what we resist, and who we exclude. I think we've got to measure goodness by what we embrace, what we create, and who we include. And that is from Chocolat, a phenomenal movie. And you think of your own definition of goodness. Is goodness to you the equivalent of duty, giving up, sacrifice? Does it bring a heaviness, a cloud over your head when you think, oh, I've got to be good, or I wasn't good today, and you just feel like goodness is this weight, this anchor you have to drag around life, and if you could only shed that anchor, you could be happy. You could be free. You could do whatever the heck you want and just really enjoy your life. Well, what if your definition of goodness is off base? What if it is duty-based, sacrifice-based, non-you-based, Now, is the alternative to goodness me only based, my way or the highway based, manipulate, connive, cheat, steal, lie, do whatever you need to, to have a little bit of happiness in your life? And the answer to that, you know, is no, a resounding no. That is self-destructive. And goodness properly formed the concept properly formed means it's good for your long-range happiness. It's rational. It connects with the facts of reality. What are your values? What are your hobbies? Who do you enjoy in your life? And what do you want to create? What career do you want to go into? Uh, what friends do you enjoy? What family do you enjoy? And do you have to feel obligated to anything you don't enjoy? 
Stay tuned. My show is The Rational Basis of Happiness, and we talk about goodness, your goodness, your happiness with no ball and chain, with no anchor around your leg. This is happiness for you. I'm Dr. Ellen Kenner, and my show is The Rational Basis of Happiness. I'm a clinical psychologist. For more Dr. Kenner podcasts, go to drkenner.com, and please listen to this ad. Here's an excerpt from The Selfish Path to Romance by Dr. Ellen Kenner. Here's another reason why the view that sexual pleasure is only physical, unrelated to your mind, your values, or your character, is very wrong. If sex were purely physical, it wouldn't matter how you viewed yourself as a person. But to fully enjoy sex, you must feel worthy of sexual pleasure. A person who feels selfless or who feels self-contempt will not get the same pleasure from sex as one who feels worthy and has high self-esteem. A man or woman who uses sexual conquest as a substitute for self-esteem soon finds that sex only hides their anxiety and self-doubt for a short time. Sex cannot fill the void caused by a lack of self-value. It can only express the self-value that you already have. You can download Chapter 1 for free at drkenner.com and you can buy the book at amazon.com.